Crinkle Roots Book of Animal Tracking by Jim Arnosky. Crinkle Roots Book of Animal Tracking. Crinkle Roots Book of Animal Tracking by Jim Arnosky. Crinkle Root. Crinkle Root was born in a tree and raised by bees. He can whistle in a hundred languages and speak caterpillar, salamander, and turtle. He knows all about wild animals, even the ones that live around your house. Crinkle Root lives in the deep woods and his favorite food is popcorn. This is what Crinkle Root's bare footprint looks like. Like yours. Crinkle Root walking barefoot. The little round marks are made by his stick. Crinkle Root hopping barefoot. Crinkle Root's animal charts. Beaver, otter, raccoon, white-tailed deer, snowshoe rabbit, bobcat, red fox, animal track chart. Hello, you've been following Crinkle Root tracks. My name is Crinkle Root, and these are my tracks. I can hear a fox turn in the forest and spot a mole hole on a mountain. I can find an owl in the daytime. When I walk around the forest, I leave signs that tell I've been around. My footprints. Animals leave marks and tracks that show where they've been and what they have been doing. I can show you how I find signs of animals that live near me. Then you can find signs of animals that live near you. One of the best places to look is around water. Animals are attracted to streams and ponds, park fountains, and even damp patches of grass. There they find water to drink and food to eat. This pond was created by beavers. Can you see the beaver signs? Beavers have sharp teeth and can gnaw down a tree. Chewed down trees and gnawed off twigs are good beaver signs to look for. Beavers create a pond by damming up a stream using branches, sticks, and mud. A damp like this is a sure sign that beavers are living in the pond. When a beaver fells a tree that is too heavy to drag to the water, it chews the tree into small logs and rolls each one into the pond. The beaver then pushes the floating log to wherever it is needed. Sometimes a beaver gets lucky and the tree falls right into the pond. Beavers use logs and chewed off branches to build their homes or lodges. Dam, food supply, lodge, entrance, muddy bottom. Beavers also eat the wood from the trees they gnaw down. In autumn, they gnaw off the small branches and store them on the bottom of the pond. In winter, when the pond is frozen over, they will use these branches for food. Let's wade around the shallow edges of the pond and look for other wildlife signs. Beaver. Chewed tree. Flat tail. Beaver's hind feet are webbed. A beaver swimming using tail and webbed feet. Peekaboo. Beavers are in the same animal family as muskrats, mice, and squirrels. They can live anywhere there is water to dam and a heavy growth of trees and bushes to eat. Beavers can grow to be very big, some weigh as much as 70 pounds. A close relative of the beaver, the muskrat, may live in streams or marshes near you. Actual size about as big as your foot. Actual size about as big as your hand. A beaver, a muskrat. Muskrats do not have webbed feet. The beaver's webbed feet show in tracks. Here are webbed footprints, but these aren't beaver tracks. These tracks were made by an otter. Otter. Webbed hind feet. Otter track showing webbed feet. Actual size is three inches. Tail drag. Tracks of an otter running. 
Otters are in the weasel family. So are minks, badges, and skunks. And weasels. Otters can grow to be 20 pounds or more. If you live near a river, you may have an otter living near you. If you live near a woodlot, look for some of otters' weasel relatives. Otters are the only weasels more at home in water than on land. Most of an otter's life is spent in a quiet underwater world. An otter can outswim a trout. Can you see the otter catching the fish in this picture? Otters are carefree critters. They play for hours sliding down muddy spots on the pond bank and splashing into the water. You may have seen otters sliding at the zoo. Whee! These footprints look like the prints of tiny human hands and feet. They were made by raccoons. Raccoons eat anything they can catch or find. They even raid garbage cans. They come to the water to hunt for crayfish, frogs, snails, and freshwater clams. Like many wild animals, raccoons are nocturnal. That means they are more active at night than during the day. Raccoon. Raiding a cornfield. Actual size, two inches. Raccoon's front foot. Raccoon's hind foot. Actual size, four inches. A raccoon may be brown or gray with a mask of black fur on its face and black rings on its tail. Most raccoons weigh between 10 pounds and 15 pounds. Raccoons grunt, growl, hiss, and sometimes they chuckle. A raccoon's teeth are as big as a dog's teeth, only much sharper. Raccoons are expert climbers and swimmers, sunning on a limb. One night, I watched a raccoon reach under the rocks in the shallow water of a pond. It was feeling for a crayfish hiding there. The raccoon looked like a bandit in the moonlight. Here are lots of raccoon tracks in the mud. Follow them and see what they tell you. What did the big raccoon catch and eat? How many smaller raccoons were there? A patch of woods is a great place to look for wildlife signs. Many of the shyest creatures live here. They hide among the trees and shadows. They eat twigs, buds, nuts, and seeds. Deer tramp trails all through the woods as they search for food and water. Look for the heart-shaped tracks of deer hooves in the mush of trampled leaves and soil. White-tailed deer, flashing warning, white patch under tail. Baby deer are called fawns. These toes on the back of a deer leg are called dew claws. Actual size, three inches. A deer track looks like an upside-down heart. White-tailed deer are named for the white patch under their tails. When deer are frightened, they flash their white tail patches to warn the other deer. Deer are in the same animal family as elk, moose, caribou, and mule deer. Deer do not like forests of tall trees. They prefer woods of young, small trees and open fields. They eat twigs, acorns, and grasses. Tracks of a deer walking. Tracks of a deer running hard. Dewclaw marks. Every summer, the male deer, which are called bucks, grow antlers on their heads. During the time they are growing, antlers are covered with a layer of fuzzy skin called velvet. The velvet is filled with blood vessels that make the antlers grow quickly. In autumn, when a buck's antlers are fully grown, the velvet begins to dry up and peel. The bucks scrape it off by rubbing their antlers against the bark of small trees and bushes. This causes worn, smooth spots on the wood, which are called buck rubs. Buck rubs are a sure sign that a buck has been using a trail. Bucks fight with each other to see who will mate with the female deer, which are called does. In winter, after the mating season is over, antlers fall off. Each buck is left with two small smooth spots on his head, where antlers begin to grow again in the spring. Antlers that have fallen off are eaten by mice, squirrels, and other hungry forest nibblers. A buck has shed his antlers in this patch of winter woods. Can you find them? Sometimes antlers fall off one at a time, so you might not find a set together. 
Owls hunt at night, but I like to hunt for owls in the daytime. So can you. Here's how. When an owl eats a mouse, it swallows it whole, tail and all. Owl pellet, actual size. The owl's stomach digests everything except the mouse bones and fur. The bones and fur form a ball that the owl coughs up and out onto the ground. These balls of bones and fur are called owl pellets. They collect on the ground around trees where owls have been roosting. You can look for these pellets around the trees near your home. If you find some, look in the tree above for an owl sleeping the day away. That's how I find owls in the daytime. Here are some owl pellets. Can you see an owl in this tree? The beaver pond looks different in winter. It's frozen and covered with snow. When there's snow on the ground, it's easy to tell which animals have been out and about. Otters slide down snowy banks into the slippery ice. Deer tracks circle the pond where does and bucks have been eaten the tender tips of the snow-covered bushes. The beavers are safe and warm in their lodge. They leave only to swim under the ice to their food supply, which they stored on the bottom of the pond during fall. Snowshoe rabbits travel over the snow on the icy pond. Their huge hind feet leave broad tracks as they search for bark and twigs to eat. When snow is soft and powdery, snowshoe rabbits stomp it down, making runways all through their feeding areas. Hibernators in mud under pond. Snowshoe rabbit. Snowshoe rabbits are members of the hare family. Snowshoe rabbits weigh about five pounds. They live in tangly patches of bushes and woods. They eat grasses and weeds in the summer and bark in the winter. Actual size, five inches. Bottom of snowshoe rabbit's hind foot. Summer color is brown. In deep powdery snow, these rabbits stamp down runways all through their territory. Tracks of snowshoe rabbit on top of snow. Snowshoe rabbits are sometimes called burying hares because their color varies or changes with the seasons. In summer they are brown and they blend in with the browns and greens of the forest. In winter their fur turns as white as snow and you can hardly see them. They can hide from enemies by standing still in the snow. Can you find six snowshoe rabbits in this picture? These two sets of tracks belong to animals that hunt and eat rabbits. One set was made by a fox and one was made by a bobcat. Can you guess which is which without reading for a clue? Bobcats live in dens and rocky areas. They have big hunting territories. Sometimes they travel far from home looking for food. The bobcat is a wild relative of the house cat. All cats, including bobcats, can retract their claws. This means they can keep their claws folded back away until they need them for climbing, fighting, or pouncing. Cats don't use their claws when they're walking or running, so claw marks rarely show in cat tracks. Clawless paw prints are a sure sign that a cat has been around. Bobcat. Retracted claws. Actual size, about two inches. A bobcat's den in a rock pile. Runway in, in runway out. Tracks of a walking cat. Bobcats are named for their short bobbed tails. Bobcats can grow to be twice the size of a house cat. They are in the same animal family as lions, tigers, cougars, and house cats. Bobcats will eat small animals, rabbits, and birds. See how the claws sh show in the lunge? Tracks of a cat jumping after a mouse. Here are the tracks of those rabbit hunters again. Now can you tell which are the foxes and which are the bobcats? You're right, the ones without claw marks are the bobcats. Like the bobcat, the fox lives in a den that may be far from where it makes its hunting rounds. The fox and the dog belong to the same family, the canine family. A dog's footprints and a fox's footprints look very much alike, but when a fox walks, it places one foot directly in front of the other, leaving a trail much narrower than a dog's. Red fox. Actual size, two and a half inches. A fox's footprint looks like a small dog's, a red fox den in a field. The red fox is a reddish-orange fox with a white-tipped tail. Foxes live in dens. They dig out in fields or on the edges of woods. 
Sometimes in the winter, foxes will sleep in the open air in the middle of an open field. A fox bark sounds like the yip of a small dog. Claws always show in canine tracks. A walking fox's tracks look like a dotted line. Tracks of a running fox. Follow these tracks on the snow-covered pond. Can you follow the fox? Where did the bobcat go? A rabbit hunting beagle has also been on the pond. Don't get them confused. A hungry fox prowling around a pond would stop to inspect these tracks. They were made by a grouse. The bushy area around the beaver pond is a good place for a grouse to live. In summer, they can find plenty of leaves and insects to eat. In winter, they can travel easily over the snow, eating twigs and winter buds. Grouse walk as often as they fly. Tracks in the snow are good grouse signs to look for. Sometimes in winter, grouse fly and dive or plunge into soft snow, making holes big enough to stay in. They keep warm underneath the snow, away from the cold air. A plunge hole in the snow is another good grouse sign to look for. During the blizzard of 77, I dove headfirst into a snowbank, thinking I'd spend the night in there, safe and warm. But the snowbank turned out to be a snow-covered boulder, and I went home with a lump on my noggin. Once in a while, a grouse makes the same mistake. Some birds walk and some birds hop. For instance, a crow is a walker. Blue jays and sparrows are hoppers. Can you guess which birds made each set of my tracks? My animal track chart on page 44 to 45 will help you. Blue jay, wing prints, crow, sparrow. Big dog, small dog or fox, chipmunk, house cat, weasel, skunk, raccoon, muskrat, mouse, rat, cottontail rabbit, gray squirrel, sparrow, a hopper, small owl, red squirrel, blue jay, a hopper, pigeon, a walker, crow, a walker, woodchuck, duck, a possum. I've seen a lot of tracks in the forest. I've even tracked fleas through the fur on a bear's back, but I can't seem to recognize these tracks next to my own. Why? They must be yours. Wherever you live, there are animals living near you. Look for the signs animals leave in parks and woodlots, on pavements and sidewalks, under trees, around streams, and ponds, and in the snow. I can't promise you'll find any flea tracks, but you'll find something. And if you hear a soft swish in the night, go back to sleep. It's just a fox turning around somewhere in the forest.